Hello, Paul Stockdale from ABCPE, the site where we try and make VCE physical education as easy as ABC. And today I'm going to be talking about feedback, something that is absolutely vital for humans to learn anything. And as humans, we do crave feedback if we are motivated to learn, whether that be a subject, physical education, or a skill in a sport. We need to know four different types of feedback in two different categories. We need to understand that we can get feedback from within. That is, we can get intrinsic feedback or we can get it from outside external sources, which we would call augmented. When we're talking about intrinsic feedback, we're talking about information that we get from our senses. We can see that we've performed something well. We can hear the bat off the ball. Um, we can feel when something is right. Proprioceptive uh, feedback is an interesting one. It's when our muscles know where, our, where they are in space and time. And when we get better at skills, we get better at understanding that. Augmented feedback is a fancy way of saying it's feedback from external sources. Um, you can see this uh, footballer here is getting plenty of negative feedback probably from the crowd. Um, often we get feedback from coaches, parents, etc., etc., teachers even. So there's two different types of feedback. The other type we need to know is we can receive knowledge of results feedback. That is the outcome of the skill we might be able to see in this case that I've kicked a goal or that it's missed, uh, as well as knowledge of performance, which is more qualitative in nature. That's when a coach comes in handy because they're able to tell you not just whether the skill was good or bad, but why it was good or bad. What were the strengths and what were the weaknesses? And then, of course, they can put in place things that will assist us to improve. Both are useful. Knowledge of performance, probably more useful um, in the long run. We put together a video um, explaining uh, a lab that we do with, with our students that might help you understand this concept of no feedback, knowledge of results feedback, and knowledge of performance feedback. And let's see how it affects the performance in this lab. I hope you enjoy it. So this is a crack on feedback. For the first five throws, we're gonna receive no feedback and see how many we get in the hoop. For the next five throws, we'll get a simple yes or no, so knowledge of results feedback. And for the next five throws, Willie's gonna give me some really good knowledge of performance feedback. Let's see how I go on each of the five trials. All right, so for these five trials, now Willie's gonna say yes or no. So knowledge of results feedback only. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. So for the next five trials now, I'm gonna try and get these balls in the hoop. Well, he's gonna give me some knowledge of performance feedback. He's gonna be really precise on where I've gone right and wrong with the skill. And hopefully I'll get more in as I respond to that feedback. Great areas that is rolled in, so a tiny bit short, but in that case, cool, well done. Keep that line. That one was a little bit too high, so you landed about 15 centimetres short. Mine is perfect. That was a great adjustment. That has landed basically in the centre of a hoop. That's a great throw. You've touched the original one, so you've been stiff, but that area, it gets a tiny bit lighter. That a boy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hope that we understand these different types of feedback a little bit more. Here is a question from the 2022 VCAR exam um, where they're asking, and I'm looking at B in particular here, where they're asking whether you understand the difference between intrinsic and augmented feedback and when performers would require the different types of feedback. So let's give you A, and you can see we're talking about Ariane Titmus. 
uh, the 2020 Olympic Games, you have to assume that she is in the autonomous stage. That is, she's an advanced performer of swimming. Um, she wouldn't have made the Olympics if she wasn't. Now, you may not have done stages of learning, but you will very shortly. And characteristics of someone in this stage is that they make very few errors. When you get good at something, you make few errors. Not only that, you know when you've made an error and you can fix your own errors, which is why when we get to B, that we need to understand that somebody at, right at the beginning, just learning to swim, is going to need lots and lots of augmented feedback. So explain why the frequency and use of intrinsic versus augmented feedback should have changed as Tit must progress through the stages of learning. And when we begin in the cognitive stage, we can't identify our own errors. We have no understanding of the skill, so we don't know whether we've done it right or wrong. That's intrinsic feedback, which we can't access. However, a coach or a teacher is going to be able to give us augmented feedback and lots and lots of it. Gradually, as we go through the stages and become better and better, um, then we're going to require less augmented feedback because we can gain more intrinsic feedback from our own senses. And a coach is more there to give us very, very specific information. Okay, I hope that um, you did well with those questions. I hope that you had a go at those questions. In this year's VCAR exam in 2022, 31% were able to get three marks for that. How did you go? Let's hope you're in that 31%. I've been Paul Stockdale from ABCPE. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon.